Hello. In this video, we're going to do another example from this book, How to Pass Exam 2 by Klein and Barnes, because we're once again looking at a situation where payments for two annuities are occurring at different frequencies. This is example 3 on page 55 of that book. Find the payment that makes a quarterly annuity immediate equivalent to a monthly annuity due with a given effective annual interest rate that applies to both situations. And um, this is going to be kind of a long video. I'm going to solve the problem in a couple ways. One from first principles in a second way with some formulas you may want to memorize. It's going to be pretty tricky. I want you to really pay good attention. I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, in the last video, we were looking at Willie, who won the lottery. Here we're looking at Willie's friend, Hillary. Hmm, I wonder why those names go together. Who has won a smaller prize from the same lottery. See the last video. She's won a prize of 25000 a month at the beginning of each month. So that's an annuity due for 20 years. But she'd prefer having a different annuity. Maybe she thinks she's going to live a long time. She prefers payments at the end of each quarter for 50 years. What would be the equivalent annuity that has the same present value? The effective interest rate, that would be an annual interest rate for both of these situations, is 8%. The goal is to find the amount of her new payment for that second annuity. We'll call that X and we'll solve for X. So our number line here, our timeline, let's say, is in months. So these are months since time zero. This would be half a year right there. The first annuity is for 20 years, which is 240 months. It's an annuity due, so the last payment will be at month 239. And the second option is an annuity immediate that goes for 50 years, which is 600 months. The second to last payment for that quarterly annuity is at time 597 months. Let's put the first annuity in red here, 25K, K means 1,000, 25,000. At time zero, at time one, etc. 240 payments of 25,000. The last one's going to be at time 239. And then the other annuity is quarterly. The first one is at time three. It's an annuity immediate. They're, they're at the end of each quarter there. Second one's at time six, then time nine, then time 12, then time 15, etc. Second to last is at month 597, and the last payment is at month 600. So we'll find the present values of these things, the second one in terms of x, and we'll be able to solve for x. So let's do this first from first principles. What's the present value of the first annuity? It is an annuity due, so symbolically it would be 25,000 times a double dot for an annuity due. There's 240 payments, and it would be the equivalent monthly interest rate here, which we could write as i12 over 12 if we like. You wouldn't have to write it like that, but we could, i12 being the nominal interest rate, annual interest rate compounded monthly. We can write it that way. And if we use the formula for a double dot, it's 1 minus v to the 240th, where this would be a monthly v, a monthly discount factor, divided by, for an annuity due, it would be d, the discount rate, and this would be a monthly discount rate. Let me just put subscripts of m to emphasize that these things are monthly. I could have called this i sub m, I suppose. But... Um, let's go ahead and solve for i12 over 12. It's going to be based on this equation, 1 plus i12 over 12 to the 12th power would be 1.08. So i12 over 12, again, which I could have just called i sub m, is going to be 1.08 to the 1 12th power minus 1. 1.08, the... 1 12th power will be to the power 0 0.083 repeating, approximately that. Subtract 1, there is i12 over 12.00643403. Um, let's find the corresponding v and d. If I add 1 to this and then take its reciprocal, the monthly v vm is going to be 0 0.9936071. Let's store that in register 1. And if I subtract that from 1, that's going to be the monthly d. 
D sub M is going to be 0 0.0063929. I'll store that in register two. All right, now let's go back and use this equation. So I go back to V sub M from register one, raise it to the 240th power, subtract that from one, divide by D sub M, which is in register zero, or register two, get 122.863 for this fraction, multiply it by 25,000, and I get over three million. I get 3,071,579, I'll go ahead and write 0.56, is what the present value of the first annuity is. What about the present value of the second annuity? PV2, the payments are X, it's an annuity immediate, so no double dots. 200 and, uh, excuse me, it's quarterly payments for 50 years, that's going to be 200 payments. And the interest rate is going to be the equivalent quarterly interest rate. You could think of that as I4 over 4 if you like, or you could just call it IQ, no pun intended. And then the formula for this is going to be 1 minus V sub Q, say, to the 200th power divided by I sub Q, which I'm labeling as I four over four. It's an annuity immediate, so I use I instead of D. One plus I four over four to the fourth power should be 1.08. So I four over four will be, take 1.08 to the one fourth power, 0.25, subtract 1, I4 over 4 is 0 0.01942655, uh, that's probably worth storing, I'll store it in register 3, store 3, the corresponding quarterly V, I can find by adding 1 to this and taking the reciprocal the quarterly V is 0 0.980943655. I can just right away raise that to the 200th power, but I think I will store it just in case I need it later. I'll store it in register four, store in four. Okay, yeah, now raise it to the 200th power, subtract that from one, divide by I four over four, which is in register three. This factor is about 50.378. We get 50.3784216 times x. And now I can solve for x just dividing, setting these two things equal and dividing by 50.378. So I'll take the reciprocal of this and multiply times 3071579.56. The answer to the nearest whole number, say, is x equals 6970. That's her quarterly payment, and that is the correct answer. Okay, that took a little while, but I, I want to continue here with another approach that is not really so much first principles as memorizing the meaning of a certain symbol and memorizing certain formulas. All right, the symbol that I'm going to describe here is typically written in this kind of way. K times A... M sub N I. What does this symbol represent? Well, you see an A there, so it should be a present value. K is a money amount. Uh, you can describe this in the most general, general way as the present value of an annuity immediate over n periods, if the periods are years, this would be n years, with effective periodic rate i, interest rate I should call this, interest rate, if it were, if the period were years, this would be an annual interest rate, an effective annual rate, 
with n payments of k divided by m per period. Again, if the period was years, this would be per year. So it's a little bit different, kind of more complicated and different kind of notation than we've used so far. The formula for this turns out to equal k times 1 minus v to the n over i m where this v is 1 over 1 plus i, that would be the effective of the, the discount factor per period, per year if the period is years, and i m is the nominal periodic interest rate compounded m times per year. Nominal annual rate compounded m times per year if the period is years. That's what this would equal. And you'd also get something similar with annuity due. If I put double dots up here, it would be the present value of such an annuity due, and I'd have a dm here instead of an im. And we are going to use actually both of these to finish this problem with this second approach. Go back up to the problem statement here again. Writing uh, in terms of the symbol that I just introduced here is a little tricky. For the first annuity, the period is going to be years here. Um, the payments are 25000 per month meaning the total payment per year is 25,000 times 12, 300,000. So for the first annuity here, with this notation, I'd have a present value of 300,000. A, the number of years is 20. The interest rate is the annual interest rate. I put a 0 0.08 there. And it's compounded 12 times per year, put a 12 up there, all right? The payment per month is going to be 300,000 divided by 12 is going to be 25,000. But based on this notation, this is the way that I'd want to write that present value. That has to equal, for the second annuity, it's x per quarter per year. That means the payment is 4x. I need to put a 4x. Um, oh, and I forgot here. I need, this was a, an annuity due, so I need double dots there for the first option. For the second option, it's 4x, it's an annuity immediate. I have an A, it's four times per year for uh, 50 years at interest rate, effective annual interest rate 0 0.08. So symbolically, it's this equation that we should solve, which if you have practice with this is a bit quicker to write down. We need to solve it now by using this formula here. Uh, this thing is going to be 1 minus 1 1.08 to the negative 20th power, that'll be the same as v to the n, divided by d12, where d12 is the equivalent uh, annual discount rate. And this thing right here is going to be 1 minus 1 1.08 to the negative 50th power divided by um, i4. Yeah, and we can figure out I4 by multiplying both sides of this thing by 4. Let's go ahead and do this one first. Let me go ahead and take, find I4 divided by 4. It's from register 3. I'll recall 3. There's I4 divided by 4. I need to multiply that by 4 to find I4 itself. So this number right here is going to be point. 0.77706619, you can see on the calculator there. That's what I have to divide by. Let's go ahead and store that in register 5. Store 5. Okay, take now 1.08 to the negative 50th power. Oops, 1.08 power. 50 negative, subtract that from 1, divide by this number, which is in register 5. Uh, this thing here equals about 12.5946. I need to multiply it by 4. And what do I get? I get 50.378. 
uh, 42166X, which is exactly the same thing as I have up there. Okay, and for the other side, I better get this 3,771,579.56. Let's see if that happens. If I'm going to do that, I need to find D12. The key equation for finding D12 is that 1 minus D12 over 12 to the negative 12th power should be 1.08. So uh, take to solve for D12, take 1.08, raise it to the negative 1 12th power, power 0 0.083333, negative. Then I'd need to subtract that from 1 and then multiply both sides by 12. Looks like D12 is 0 0.07671478. Let's store that in register 6. Go back up here, 1.08 to the negative 20th power, subtract that from 1, divide by d12 and register 6. And this fraction is about 10.2386, then multiply it by 300,000. Looks good. We get the same thing as this, very close at least, up to a little bit of rounding error. So that will give us the same answer for x. The answer to this problem is 60,970. Thank you for sticking with me on this long problem, but I hope it was worthwhile.